There's an old saying, I can't remember it verbatim, might be a parable in the Bible, maybe a story from some religious scholar. I don't remember. Either way, the story talks about these two men. One of the men was building his house on a rock, solid foundation. The other man, he decided he was going to build his house on the sand. The smart dude who built his house on a solid foundation tried telling his neighbor, tried to convince him that it wasn't a good idea to build a house on sand. The guy just wouldn't listen. Both houses end up being built. Everything's fine for a little while. Then a storm comes. The family inside the house built on a solid foundation, they're fine. Perhaps they were sitting in their living room watching the rainfall, while the family in the house built on sand ended up buried under all the rubble. While I was watching this clip I'm about to show you, I was reminded of this parable. The entire movement, whether you want to call it the woke movement, social justice, or the modern Democratic Party, whatever you want to call it, the entire movement is built on sand. There is no solid foundation. All it takes is one strong argument and their entire premise falls apart. This is the reason they create all these catchphrases and false narratives. You know the catchphrases that I'm talking about. Hope and change. Ooh, how beautiful. Black lives matter. Display your pride. Pound that brown. Woman's right to choose. Fight to end mythical racism. These people have to cloak their true agenda. They have to disguise their real purpose because they know Americans aren't going to buy into their real narrative. They can't just come out and say, we want to take away all your freedom. They know people would never go for that, so they have to get creative. They create problems hoping we beg them for the solution. One of their most popular creations is mythical racism. One of the subsets of mythical racism is this push for reparations. For decades here in America, shit fucks have been fighting to give marginalized groups reparations. We should give free money to these people. Their lives have been filled with pain and agony. Their great, 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 great grandfather's second cousin might have been a slave. Maybe white people must atone for this sin. The thing they don't tell you about reparations is just another method to keep your community down. It's similar to the welfare system. They get low-income families completely reliant on the government locking in their votes, but what it does, it eradicates any drive, any ambition for them to become self-reliant. Shit fucks, they don't want you relying on yourself. If you're self-reliant, you don't need them. And if you don't need them, their entire narrative falls apart. Right now, there are discussions about reparations over in England. Somehow, the passing of Queen Elizabeth has created this false notion that England owes billions of dollars to black people. Why? Who fucking knows? Nothing ever makes sense with these shit fucks. Last week, America's favorite fruit, Don Lemon, he invited a woman named Hillary Fordwich into his fruit basket and offered her the opportunity to squeeze his lemons for a fresh batch of lemonade. Unfortunately for Donnie, there were two problems here. Number one, Hillary Fordwich is a real woman. Donnie thought he was inviting a man pretending to be a woman. He was all excited for a round of lemon squeezing, followed by a passionate round of the butt bongo. Instead, he was served a four-course meal of the truth. Now, this is a common occurrence in the shitfuck community. These people, they have the hardest time identifying a woman. Show them a picture of Kate Middleton. This is clearly a non-binary chainsaw. Show them a picture of Rachel Levine. Ooh, ooh, look at that sexy woman. I wonder if she likes hot dogs. Those buns look perfect for a woke wiener. Mistake number two, Donnie thought that he was inviting someone onto his show that would agree with his propaganda. Now, I can't blame him. CNN, they usually book guests that believe men had the ability to get pregnant. Why would Don Lemon think the network would set him up with someone who has the ability to think on their own? Don Lemon floated his theory that the British royal family and the British government in general is responsible for paying reparations over something that happened Hundreds of years ago, England abolished slavery in 1833, almost a hundred years before Queen Elizabeth was even born. Yet for some reason, the fruit believes the royal family, along with the British government, should be responsible for paying reparations. 
Now I'm going to show you this clip in its entirety. I usually condense clips that are this long, but I didn't want to leave out any of the context. This is a prime example of what happens when a shit fuck gets slapped in the face with the truth. Watch for yourself. Well, this is coming when, you know, there's all of this wealth and you hear about it comes as England is facing rising costs of living, a living crisis, austerity budget cuts and so on. And then you have the, those who are asking uh, for reparations for colonialism. And they're wondering, you know, one hundred billion dollars, twenty four billion dollars here and there, five hundred million there. Some people want to be paid back and uh, and members of the public are wondering, why are we suffering when you are? You know, you have all of this vast wealth. Those are legitimate concerns. Well, I think you're right about reparations in terms of if people want it, though, what they need to do is you always need to go back to the beginning of a supply chain. Where was the beginning of the supply chain? That was in Africa. And when that crossed the entire world, when the slavery was taking place, which was the first nation in the world that abolished sla uh, slavery? The first nation in the world to abolish it. It was started by William Wilberforce, was the British. In, in Great Britain, they abolished slavery. 2,000 naval men died on the high seas trying to stop slavery. Why? Because the African kings were rounding up their own people. They had them on cages waiting in the beaches. No one was running into Africa to get them. And I think you're totally right. If reparations need to be paid, we need to go right back to the beginning of that supply chain and say who was rounding up their own people and having them handcuffed in cages. Absolutely. That's where they should start. And maybe, I don't know, the descendants of those families where they died at the, in the high seas trying to stop the slavery, that those families should receive something too, I think, at the same time. It's an interesting discussion, Hillary. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. First of all, let me just explain how irrelevant Don Lemon has become. This segment aired last week, but it didn't start circulating the internet until yesterday. It took an entire week for people to notice that Don Lemon was silenced on his own show. If this had happened on Fox News or MSNBC, it would be headline news in a matter of minutes. When it happens to Don Lemon on CNN, no one noticed. I thought Hillary Ford, which I thought her response was brilliant. We hear all this talk about reparations. We hear all these arguments about how we are responsible for paying for the sins of our ancestors. No one can prove whose ancestors owned slaves and whose didn't. Do you know if yours did? I don't. We hear all this talk about the government being responsible for atoning for this sin. The same government, both in Britain and here in America. The same governments that granted freedom to the slaves. Both governments abolished slavery hundreds of years ago. So why in the fuck would you want to punish them? Why would you bite the hand that gave you freedom? When the DEA investigates drug crimes, who are they targeting? Are they going after the buyers or the sellers? If you eliminate the organizations that are selling the merchandise, the buyers no longer exist. With well, that being the case, why aren't these people talking about African countries paying billions of dollars in reparations? They sold their own fucking people! Let's just remove the woke hats for a moment and look at this logically. Let's assume for a second that people alive today actually deserve reparations. I mean, personally, I don't think they're owed anything except the opportunity to live their life how they choose, just like the rest of us. But let's just pretend reparations are deserved. From a logical perspective, who should have to pay? The countries that purchased the slaves ended up recognizing that it was wrong and granted them freedom? Or the African governments that took advantage of their own people, forced them into confinement against their will, and then sold them to make themselves rich. Answer seems obvious to me, but what the hell do I know? I'm not a shit fuck. But when it comes to the royal family, why should they be responsible for atoning for a sin they never committed? After Hillary Fordwich made this point, Don Lemon immediately rushed a commercial break. Outside of saying, it's an interesting discussion, Don Lemon said nothing. He was silenced. Why? This is the same dude who defended Antifa. This is the same Lemon who, along with his brother in Bongo, Chris Cuomo, claimed the Black Lives Matter protests were not supposed to be peaceful. The Lemons never had an issue defending his opinion. So how did he transform from a talking lemon into a muted melon? Two reasons. One, 
It's easy to defend your position when you're not receiving any resistance. It's easy for Don Lemon to attack Donald Trump when he's sitting next to Van Jones. It's easy to promote Tran Dan the All-American Woke Man when you're debating Anderson Cooper. My sources tell me Andy and Danny practice the art of menage a trois with America's favorite fruit. But as soon as Don Lemon is hit with resistance, he reserved his right to remain silent. Number two, he didn't defend his position because he knows he's wrong. What the hell could he have said to convince people Hillary Fordwich was full of shit? It is impossible to defend lies when you're hit with the truth. I told you guys earlier, it took a week for this segment to start circulating the internet. The story was picked up yesterday by Newsmax, the National Review, Fox News, the Daily Mail, some other conservative outlets, but it's strange. The rest of the woke mainstream media, they're ignoring this story. Since the passing of Queen Elizabeth, the mainstream media has been obsessed with colonialism and the need for reparations. Here we have a woman laying out a brilliant plan for reparations, but the media is silent. I thought all they cared about was getting these people money. Why are they silent about it? They pretend this idea doesn't even exist. Huh. I wonder why. Why? Of course, we all know the reason. This idea doesn't fit the media narrative. Reparations are only a talking point when white people or white governments are responsible for paying it. You float the idea that African governments should be responsible for selling out their own people. Silence. Well, KC, this is not the 1990s. Here in the woke media, we are no longer allowed to talk about black-on-black -black crime. We have found new ways to make these people victims. Let me know what you guys think. Don Lemon silenced on his own show. Do you think reparations should be paid? If you do think they should be paid, who should be responsible for paying it? Let me know. Sound off in the comments below. Make sure to like and subscribe. Click the notification bell to receive all notifications from the channel. Best way to contact me is by email at btlkc84 at gmail.com. KC underscore BTL84 on Twitter. I'll see you guys later.